three. Um, I'll mention this though. I think that you pose a great question. Are a good amount of women sex workers, right? This would be a great topic. This probably get us canceled. <laughs> um, but but it, it, it's it's a question <laughs> that you can say. I mean, I'm gonna go on. This might get me canceled. <laughs> I'm just going on record and say it. Uh, if you're advertising yourself online as a woman, you are grifting as a sex worker. If you're uh, have a, a email to book you or you're like doing some sort of like scandally clad like what if you're um, in a bikini well bikini doesn't necessarily count i don't think but i think that okay here's what i'll say to the panel to homie to to the watchers there's three different levels of women nowadays with social media there's the good girls who are really truly trying to find a man not you know they obviously still leverage their looks for certain things but they're not necessarily trying to be insta thoughts there's what I call the in-betweeners, meaning I will turn into a sex worker depending <laughs> on the situation. If NBA All-Star Weekend is coming to Atlanta, I'm a sex worker. Yes, I'm going to leave my man. I'm going to say, hey, me and the girls are going down to Atlanta. No, it's just a girl trip. Don't worry about it. And I'm going to go get smashed or try to get smashed by some big name, you know, uh, basketball player. And then there's the third, which is... I'm a sex worker and I'm okay with saying it, or I have only fans or whatever it is. But I think there's a good majority of women around the world, but let's just talk about the U S and maybe some of the countries we go to like Colombia, that are grifters in betweeners, meaning I will be one depending on the situation. And a lot of women are okay. I think a lot of women are okay selling pussy as long as they in their mind don't think that they're selling it. Um, but they really are at the end of the day, right, homie? I, I, I and I, and I think that you guys are okay with buying it as long as in their mind and they're, they're not thinking they're buying they're it. buying it exactly. It so it's all this feeling thing. But I think that there are we need to talk about this more in the space. I think there are more specifically American women who are okay turning into sex workers for the right guy or for the right situation. For example, if I go to a club in Miami. Well, yeah, I got a boyfriend, but yeah, I'm gonna push my tits up and try to get in this guy's VIP. Like, like I got tits. Of course, like women have no problem using what they have to get what the fuck they want. And or that's if why they we're have a boyfriend men, and somebody offers them five hundred dollars on the spot or a thousand dollars, they're gonna take it. Yeah, most of the yeah, time, yeah. guys. I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. But like, and that's, and that goes back to with women, the way they feel good about themselves is to know that they still, still got it or they're still cute. Meaning. Yes, I have a husband. Yes, I have a man, but I'm still going to, and he's not here right now. I'm still going to dress provocatively and I'm going to still see if I can work my magic and get us free drinks, right? Otherwise, if you really were an independent woman or really were faithful to your man, you wouldn't even try that shit. You just wait in line like all the other bitches do, but no, I'm going to go to the front of the line and try to get the bouncer to put me in. So bring it all for full circle. I think that women are, a lot of women are sex workers and don't know it and they're in delusion. And I think as far as QB goes, I think that he's either trolling or he's one of those guys that is complete, like he's, maybe he's just in delusion. Like he he he's around these sex working women, but he doesn't believe he's paying for it. I, I think he needs to tell people he's trolling. I, I think that would be the best thing for him to do. It would be super funny. We would all laugh and we would all like love QB. Right now, in this space, <laughs> in, in this space, like QB has managed to absolutely decimate his reputation, his credibility. And for me, I told him that I'm going easy on him, but I'm like, bro, I, I haven't even brought this over to TikTok yet. Like, I can really dump on you for the rest of the year, bro. Granted, I don't know if you guys know the context, but QB's been dumping on me for two months straight, like just nonstop Discord, YouTube comments. <laughs> you know, panels, all, all types of stuff. Mm -hmm. Just, just, just for no reason. You know what I mean? You know, maybe he found my YouTube channel, just felt like hating, you know what I'm saying? Nonstop. And I was just like, man, I really don't want two black dudes going back and forth on YouTube. I hate seeing the back and forths in the past four bro space. I think it's so corny, especially when it comes to like Austin Holloman and some of the other channels. And right. like, I don't have any personal opinion on how anybody does what it is they do. If that's what you do, that's cool. But as black men, I think we need to try to portray ourselves better. Well, guess what? I said, fuck that. Do all that shit out the window. I'm dumping on him for the rest of the year. Oh, well. I joined the circuit, y'all. Hey, it welcome. is what it is. We're welcome in, we're welcome in, to the team. Yeah, bro. we're in there, too. Welcome to the team. We got, we got, a, we got an active beef going on, too. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, sometimes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
from you uh some raccoon uh you ever watch the avengers you watch uh <laughs> what is it yeah. the guardians of the galaxy <laughs> that little <laughs> raccoon just yeah. a little raccoon yeah yeah um okay. a passport bro um he uh he had some smoke for us on a panel um and we had to kind of put belts to asses and put him at at rest he still sometimes pops out of his little hole and we have to kind of smack him down but he has um a bunch of youtube uh followers and so he thinks since our channel is smaller than his he can say what he wants and we just had to basically expose him but you know we we do try to keep it peaceful in the in the travel space but sometimes you just got to you know, you got to respond to people. And I think that's the point that we, where you're at with maybe you and QB situation. But, you know, we fuck with QB. We, we've had him on uh, our, our our live, I think, before. Or at least he's been in our chat a lot. He's in our Discord. But I was unaware of this beef or problem that you guys had until really recently. Um, Same here. I didn't even so know. So he was on your, you had, or you were on his channel or he was on yours. Yeah, and y'all did and like a debate. Y'all did a debate. And then I popped in for that. And then uh, I was watching some of that. And then um afterwards after the debate i started really watching you know your medellin content i was like damn this is dope so mm -hmm. i watched a few videos and then i joined the discord but i haven't really been able to be active you know I, I, but then i see qb in there you know uh trolling a little bit and mm -hmm. you know y'all going back and forth so um one of our supporters hit us hit me up today and told me that uh that you had dropped the video and he sent me the link and i was like it would be good for to talk about this because you know we have an interesting take on this topic and we more so agree with you know what you were saying it's cool to do it you know as long as that's not your only means it's, as long as you that's not the only way you can get girls is not a bad thing to do it you know especially if your time means something now if your time doesn't mean anything and you have time to go and spend five hours you know talking on the phone love bombing uh facetiming doing all that stuff and boo loving, boo loving like you ain't you don't have no other hobbies you don't have a, a a purpose to be on then cool but for me like you know i got my purpose and you know sometimes i just i just want to go get a mission accomplished you know that i need to get accomplished and so i get it done but at the same time I was in Brazil, you know, booed up, you know, I, I ended up dating like three, three girls seriously while I was there, you know, at different times, but three different girls, um, yeah. you know, so I was just having them come over for the most part, but homie, can't we all just get along? Can't you just sing Kumbaya, sing Kumbaya, hold with, hands, with passport, uh, uh, TV I, and, I and, wish. I, I wish, man, but it, you know, I don't, I don't think we've ever been able to just all get along. It's always going to be, it, it's funny because like the passport bro space is a subsection of, I guess you could say the red pill space or mm -hmm. the uh, manosphere space. I mean, how would you guys? That's exactly categorize what Steve it? says all the time. I say that all the time. I think, I think the passport bros uh is a sort of a spinoff or really the next thing i think the red pill content is starting to die down and what is starting to become more popularized is this whole get your passport movement and i think that um you know channels like ours uh yours and others are going to be the in the forefront of a mass a uh, group of men grabbing and, and and getting their passports to to get the fuck up out of here, but um yeah I would I would agree that it is part of the whole manosphere, um red pill thing. I think that Myron, you know, I know these guys personally, Fresh Myron from Fresh and Fit, they try not to touch on this topic, which I think was a was a mistake on their part, but um I think that it's a topic that's a very important topic and i think that men need to understand that they have options so there needs to be more channels talking about the whole passport bro thing um and i think it had some buzz with austin holloman and his whole situation but i don't think he wanted to be the the poster boy for it i think he wanted to sort of get that off of his name and so it kind of died down a little bit and now i think it's starting to build back up in the whole space in my opinion yeah, and where where I'm trying to carry it right now is I'm very because like I said I'm in I'm in tech and I'm I'm very big on working remote and you know I've been I've been reading this book 
I've been advocating for it. At this point, he's just going to have to like sponsor me or something like this because I've been talking about this book so much, Nomad, Nomad Capitalist. Capitalist. Uh -huh. And it's like with, with the way the whole economy is going right now, the whole economy, things like that. And this is something I want to cover if I'm able to properly break it down into content. The reason why we see sex work so prevalent in these third world countries is because their economy is not strong. And what's happening to the U.S. right now is because the economy is breaking down, you're starting to see an increase or an uptick in what is apparently an obvious sex work from the women that live in this country. And my thesis is basically like as a economy starts to destabilize itself, the women tend to flock towards whoredom a lot more often. Mm -hmm. So now I think we're seeing that a lot more. And one of the ways that men are just putting their common sense together is this economy is bad. The job market is bad. I can cut my costs going overseas. The mm -hmm. Internet is a thing now. I can earn an income. You know what I'm saying? And I can, you know, free myself of this matrix that's going on here in the States where dating has now turned into a mild form of prostitution Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm working much longer hours and earning a lot less. The whole passport bro movement is like common sense. And the whole theme in his book, the nomad capitalist is basically to go where you're treated best, go mm -hmm. where you're treated best, go where your money stretches longer, go where the tax rates are much lower for yourself. You don't have to stay here and put up with your shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's, 100%. you know, duh. Right. And it's more beneficial for, for men. It's really beneficial for black men because now black men get a more diverse outlook on the entire world. And that's why they're demonizing the passport bro space. That's that's yep. all it really is. It's like now we're coming to our senses because for us, men don't mind dating down. So me going to Brazil or going to Colombia or going to Africa and dating a woman that's at a at a much, you know, financially, she's not on my level, it's not a problem for me. But women here, women here are shitting on the top 1% of men in the world. Like in the U.S., we are the top 1% just because we are literally on this continent. Yes. So if you cannot appreciate the men that's here in this continent, you're not going to go anywhere else and truly uh, appreciate these men. Because the majority of men around the world are what we're going to consider poor if they're not inside of a first world country. So... Now becoming a passport bro is more than just becoming a woke to woke to woman's nature. It's like, okay, you are awake to woman's nature in the red pill space. Now what are you gonna do about it? You know, like what's the action? What's the plan of action? Well, I'm gonna take myself, I'm gonna relocate myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go to where the food is healthier, the weather is better, the women are better, they're way more feminine, and I'm gonna figure out how to work myself in this space. And then what's happening is it's basically just the devil coming into this space and try to take what's good from people. That's it. But I, I think I think people like me, you guys, you guys especially, because you guys have been at this shit, but we are really the last stand before the world kind of just goes upside down. And it's like women are ruling the world for the next 100, 200,000 years. It's like, hey, you got to do what's best for you. Put your foot down and go where you're treated best. Right. And everyone's against that. I see so much content from women shitting on passport bros and oh this guy got scoped and this guy got drugged and they're happy this, about it they're laughing right and this is becoming like the like the total outlook it's like these guys going overseas are dumb mm -hmm. no it's actually a really good move to make 100%. but we need people in this space that's going to show you the real instead of like selling you dreams show you the real so on my channel it wasn't just hey i'm in medellin with all these baddies I was building a search directory. I was telling people, hey, I'm getting off of the Airbnbs that are of low cost, not the ones that's super high cost that you can't, you know, you Google search like an Airbnb. They showing you all the highest shit first. There's places you could go for cheap. That's less. There's places you can eat. That's that's cheaper. You know, they've, they've got jobs and things like that, that you can work and get paid a good salary and mm -hmm. be be out here. You don't have to go through this nonsense that's going on in these first world countries there is an escape and it's better for you in the long term now what are we going to do are we going to go back and forth 
and bicker with each other or are we going to actually try to do something about it? A lot of you guys have been asking, Steve, is there a Discord? Is there a group chat? Is there a way we can talk with you or amongst each other about traveling, about Colombia, so on and so forth? So yes, guys, finally, there is a Discord. The link is in the description. Also, I have a Locals. If you guys wanna see the behind the scenes spicy content that's not safe for YouTube, make sure you sign up for the Locals. And lastly, guys, you can become a member of the channel. If you become a member of the channel, guys, you will get exclusive drops to videos. I'll probably put some members only videos out. There'll be a lot of perks. So make sure you guys join the channel and become a member.